now we are coming to the second part of our story about the derivatives associated with functions of two variables. Again, I would like to assure you that you really have to give a little more concentration. Here we are going up a bit differently. Uh, note that uh, we have been writing a gradient directional derivative m v t, uh, it is not m t v by the way, it is m v t means mean value theorem and other stuff. So, uh, just have to be very attentive here. Gradient of a function of two variables at any given point x y or x not y not does not matter whatever you want to say is written like this and this is nothing but a vector consisting of Now, you might question me ok, what about vectors, you have not spoken about vectors. It is too difficult to speak about everything in the same course, but I assume that you know what is a vector. So, a vector in a two dimensional geometric framework is a object which has both the magnitude and a direction. So, if you take a point in the two dimensional plane and join it, join it with a straight line with the origin O, then these are the particular direction and of course, it has a particular magnitude. If you change the point to some other point here for example, so it has another direction and it has a magnitude. So, these quantities are called vectors, but it can be easily seen that this point is this point which we had drawn first can be given a coordinate x 1 y 1 because this is in the x y plane and the second one is given x 2 y 2. So, x 1 y 1 has a different magnitude and a direction x 2 y 2 has a different magnitude and a direction. So, I can instead if I call this vector as v 1 and if I call this vector as v 2, it does not make any problem if I say v 1 is x 1 y 1 or you can write it just x 1 y 1 in this same row, row type fashion. This is a, I am writing it like this because this is one of the standard ways of way of writing it. You may not write it like that also, you may just you can it is just you can write like this as a, you know, in form of row that is if you write like this. I think mathematicians prefer this, physicists prefer the way I am writing now. So, it does not matter whatever you want to do. So, so you have uh, here that I am essentially expressing a vector in terms of the its coordinates. So, here basically the coordinates are a point whose x coordinate is x uh, del f del x y coordinate is del f del y right. So, this is this is a vector because these are real numbers right. So, if you put some x particular value of x and y this will give me one real number this will give me another real number. The there is a notion of dot product of two vectors. So, it is either denoted like this or denoted like this. This is called a dot product. And how do I compute? Because just if I say v 1 dot v 2 does not mean anything. It essentially means the product of the, it essentially means that the product of the magnitude, this this absolute value of v 1 actually means the magnitude of v 1 into the magnitude of v 2 into cosine of the angle between them theta cos theta. This can be much more easily computed when you have represented in terms of coordinates. So, in terms of coordinates v 1 dot v 2 is written as x 1 into x 2 define y 1 into y 2 and this is exactly same as this. The interesting part is that all of you have learned that I can think of a unit vector i along this direction and I am thinking of a unit vector j along the y direction. Then any vector v 1 this is possibly known to can be expressed in the following way x 1 into i vectors are usually given with a hat to show their speciality those who know some linear algebra will immediately understand that we are talking about the basis for vector space. So, I cannot resist telling these terms because I am a mathematician, but 
uh, from a physicist point of view these are simple unit vectors and you can express any vector as a scale up as a addition of two inner pro, you know, the two unit vectors scaled up by the amount given by the coordinates of the vector. So, it is written as a y 1 j vector. Now, once you do that you can we can now think of something called a directional derivative that is finding the derivative of the function of two variables in a certain given direction. So, a given direction would be another vector say it is a u vector and u 1 it is given in terms of two coordinates u 1 and u 2 and I am telling I am asking what is the meaning of derivative or what is the meaning of the directional derivative of the function f in the direction u. This is given as follows. in the direction u. In the direction u it is given as the inner the dot product of the gradient vector into the u vector. So, it is u 1 del f del x plus u 2 del f del y is as simple as that. Of course, there is a much more uh, involved definition which many of you might not uh, find uh, very comfortable, but we will just provide it. It is in your book also. It says that okay, if you are talking about the directional derivative of the function x y at the point x y in the direction u 1 and u 2, what you do is move from x y in the direction u 1 and u 2. So, this simply means that if this is my x y point, this is my vector x y and this is my u vector with u 1 and u 2 as coordinates. So, I have to move from x y in a certain dire in the direction of u 1 u 2 that is in a direction parallel to the u 1 u 2 vector direct parallel to the u 1 u 2's direction and in that direction if I move what is the derivative of this function. So, it essentially means to find limit lambda going to 0 f of x plus lambda u 1 y plus lambda u 2 minus f of x y and that divided by lambda. Okay, there are a lot of issues here I am just not going to go. This is the simple definition and in this book also there is a say f x y is equal to x square plus x y. Right. f x y is equal to x square plus x y and they ask you okay guys using this first principle find the limit and for the find the directional derivative in the direction u 1 u 2 or rather I would say they have they have given in the direction of a vector u which is given as 1 by root 2 i vector plus 1 by root 2 j vector. So, now you will immediately realize the following fact that this is u, u hat is nothing but the vector in the Cartesian in the if we once taken in the Cartesian coordinate this is representing the coordinates 1 by root 2 1 by root 2 and I am going to find the directional derivative. If you go by the first principles the answer given in the book is 5 by root 2, but you will see that this is much more easier to find in the way I have shown you. So, first I will find the gradient vector which is del f del x del f del y and that is given here as 2 x plus y right and 
of course, 5 by root 2 answer cannot come unless you are looking at a certain point which I have missed sorry. So, you are, you are telling that you have to find it in the directional derivative in the direction u at the point x y which they have given as 1 2. So, I will now compute it at x equal to 1 2. So, what is del f del y here? Del f del y is just x. So, now I have to compute the grad f x y vector at the point 1 2 and that will give me, I will put x equal to 1 and y equal to 2. So, that will give me 4 and this will give me 1, 4, 1. Now, my directional derivative is basically taking the dot product of f x y at 1, 2 with the vector u which is 1 by root 2, 1 by root 2. So, I would have 4 1 dot 1 by root 2 1 by root 2. So, this is nothing but 4 by root 2 plus 1 by root 2 that is 5 by root 2 which is same as the answer given in the book which they have calculated by doing this limit. So, you see this is this is exactly the uh, fact. Now, once directional derivatives has some uses they are a lot hugely used in optimization which is a subject where you talk about maximization and minimization of function which we will not get into uh, unless the, we come into the next uh, thing. There are certain issues like what do you mean by the is there a mean value theorem for functions of two variables that is a big question. So, we are going to now talk of about the mean value theorem for functions of two variables and once we do that you will have a interesting idea about how things can be bought from the higher dimension to the lower dimension. So, there is something called a total derivative we, what we have spoken is a partial derivative. So, what is what is called a total derivative? Yeah. So, or the total differential. So, you have already I will just come, but let me just mention the um, this uh, the concept of di full differentiability is slightly difficult at this stage to give you which that is why I am not going to talk about the concept of full differentiability, but what I am going to talk about is that I can talk about what is called a differential of a function and how to use that idea to speak about the mean value theorem. Now, for me do this, see we have already spoken about this chain rule. The total differential of a function of two variables is actually defined as follows del f del x into the differential of x plus del f del y into the differential of y. See, it is nothing but an extension of the, the whole idea what you had in function of one variable. Function of one variable, if f of the function of one variable, then you essentially have to close this part, then you do not, you can actually forget this part. But because you now have a function of two variables, you essentially have to bring in the y component. So, you have this part. So, this is total differential of a function of two variables. So, I will call this as the total differential. Now, this total differential has some meaning. The meaning is as follows, it can be usefully you can use to approximate functions. So, this leads us to what is called a mean value theorem. Of course, I can use the function of one variable to handle all this, but instead of going into the details, for example, let me tell you one thing. For example, if you take a function f of t, function of one variable t take a fixed x and fixed y and a fixed h and a fixed k. 
So, h and k these are is a fixed vector which is giving you a direction and x and y are a fixed point reference point. So, you are moving from that. So, basically from x y you are moving in the direction of h and k and h and k is here. So, this is your origin and this is the full stop. So, similar things like the directional derivatives. So, now if I take the derivative of this f dash t d f d t, how will I do it? d f d t is nothing but taking the chain rule what we have learnt because this now I have made these variables as a function of t. So, we want to compute d f d t right. I just wrote del x d t when I was about to move ahead, but let I thought that okay, let us just wait and ask how to compute this. So, just just for a second observe the following that consider here the function f where x, y, h, k are the independent variable t is for the moment a constant. Then I can write this z as f of xi eta where xi is a function say phi of x, y, h, k and that is given by x plus t h and eta is a function of functions a psi of x y h k given as y plus t k. Now, t is a constant for the time. Now, if I go by the chain rule, now xi for the moment if I fix up x and h, x y h k I fix up then xi and I start varying t then xi becomes a function of t and eta becomes a function of t. Then by that rule my d f d t what I have learnt earlier should be del f del xi because this is my xi and this is my eta del f del xi del xi del eta which is same as writing as del phi del eta or d xi d t or d phi d t is the same thing plus del f del eta d psi d t. So, if you look at, so now what is now del, del f del xi at the point xi eta basically. So, if you look at this, so it becomes del phi del, del xi del t is just uh, h. So, it is h into del f del xi plus k into del f del eta right. Now, once I have done this, I need to know how to calculate del f del xi in terms of del f del x, because xi is a function of x h y k right. Now, if I want to calculate del f del x on this function, because I can write this as phi of x y h k, this is phi of h k, del f del x, then what should I do? Then I should go by the chain rule. So, del f x, now basically I am computing del f del x at xi eta, this is and then if I go by the chain rule, what I should do? I should first calculate del f del xi into del xi into I should I should have now del f if I come del xi into del phi of or del xi del x or del phi of del x del f del eta into del psi of del eta. Similarly, for the others h and k. Of course, it does not mind if I for the moment even fix up my h and k, it does not matter. I, I can even forget the h and k and say h and k are just constants and then go on. So, So, it should be sorry del xi beta. So, if you write now del f by del h. So, del f. 
So, you have to write del f with respect to del h here right. Basically then again then you have to write del phi by. So, you have to write again here psi and eta del phi del x del phi. So, you have to again come and write del f del xi basically you with respect to xi here you have got uh, del phi del x. So, this is the chain rule. So, del phi del x here is just 1 the remaining goes and del psi del x here is just 0 because there is no x. So, it becomes del phi del xi at into del phi del x which is 1. So, what is happening? So, del f del x at xi eta is same as del f del xi at xi eta. So, now I can then write this d f d t as h into del f del x plus k times del f del y at xi eta. So, these are all evaluated at the point xi eta whatever be your given xi eta does not matter. So, xi is f of x plus t h for some given t. So, that is exactly the calculation. Now, this will immediately lead us to a mean value theorem very simple. So, what I will do take the function f t minus f 0 divided by t. This is nothing if the function f is differentiable which I am seeing that it is differentiable I can compute it out is some for some c which is lying between t and 0. So, any point lying between t and 0 is a fraction of t. So, where theta is something lying between 1 and 0. So, once this is done you can immediately write down the whole thing. So, you know what is f t and you know what is uh, f of uh, 0. So, immediately once you do it because if you so, it will become f f of x plus t h y plus t k minus f of x y is equal to what is this f dash theta t. So, what is f dash theta t? It is nothing but h into del f del x computed at x plus theta h t y plus theta k t plus k into del f del y del f del y computed at x plus theta h t and y plus theta k t where theta is between 1 and 0 just by using the function for mean value theorem for one variable, we have got the mean value theorem for two variables m v t for so del f del y for two variables. So, here again we have calculated del f del x at x, x is x equal to h now instead of t I have put theta t. So, instead of h t I have h of theta t instead of k t I have theta of when k of theta t the, the same thing here. So, you see how much the chain rules are involved and how much calculations we did. So, you really need to go through these calculations once yourself to convince yourself and with this we end the session and we come back to talk about maximum minimum of two variables in the next class.